Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitale. Today I want to share with you really quickly how to make a large family style pot of mashed potatoes, which are going to be perfect for your Thanksgiving table. Now I've done a traditional mashed potato years and years ago. In my opinion, that one did not have nearly enough fat in it. I'm just being honest here. Because when it comes to mashed potatoes, in my humble opinion, you need to have all the fats. And I'll explain to you what I mean in a second because it is really the only way to have mashed potatoes. If you're going to have mashed potatoes, make them really good. I went ahead and did a little bit of work beforehand just because I um, didn't want to bore you by boiling potatoes. But I want to discuss my potatoes because this is important. What I've got here is 10 pounds of russet potatoes. I'm a fan of russet potatoes for mashed potatoes because they are fluffy, they are not very sweet, um, they whip the best. I just think it's, my f it's absolutely my favorite potato to work with and it's my favorite potato for mashed potato. I've boiled these until they were super, super tender in some heavily salted water. That's important, okay? You want to make sure that your water is salted. When I went to drain it, before I drained them, I reserved a little bit of the salty water because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to help mash them. It's a tip I got years ago from someone um, and I've been doing it that way ever since. This, in my opinion, and I have to say this because you're going to be serving this with a lot of other sides, it serves between 16 and 20 people because you're going to need a scoop of mashed potatoes, not a pot of mashed potatoes, unless you're my sister, in which case this feeds one, okay? Let's get going. You never want to add cold stuff to hot potatoes. So, in a saucepan, I'm adding a mixture of heavy cream and whole milk. Don't even think about skim, semi-skim, 2%, none of that. And then we're going to add a couple of sticks of butter. Listen, it's 10 pounds of mashed potatoes. If you really want to divide, it's a tablespoon per person if you're feeding 16. Tablespoon of butter, okay? If you really want to go into that. Then you'll need cream cheese and sour cream. Yes, yes you do. And then you just need some salt and pepper, and that's it. While these two things are, those three things are uh, melting and doing all the right things, add a little bit of your starchy salted water and start mashing. Now you have options for smashing because life is full of, you know, of options and you should have your, your options. I either like to use a masher or a potato ricer. Never make mashed potatoes in a food processor. When I see that, I cringe because you're turning your mashed potatoes into glue and nobody wants that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mash them to my liking. You can do them chunky. You can do them really smooth. By, oh, hey, yo, by using a ricer, you can do whatever your heart desires. Also, when we make these, you're gonna see that it's, they're really loose. And I'm doing that on purpose because you have to remember that these are gonna sit. And as they sit, they will thicken. And I think you should put these in your slow cooker and put them on warm, that way that it can stay warm throughout dinner and you don't have to worry about cold mashed potatoes because nobody likes cold mashed potatoes. I'm just gonna keep on mashing. All right, just about there. And I have to just clarify, since the time my sister was itty bitty and could eat, her favorite things were mashed potatoes and anything to do with corn. Corn pudding and mashed potatoes are the thing at the Thanksgiving table that is like hers. So when I tell you that this could feed her, I mean that because it's her favorite thing in the world and it's the sweetest thing. And in fact, when she was younger, she used to add cooked rice to her mashed potatoes <laughs> to make them go a lot further because she loves mashed potato. Who doesn't love mashed potato? All right, we're gonna add our liquid here. I do it a little bit at a time and then I just sort of like go in here and mash. You can do these really cheesy. Oh my goodness, what did I just do? Uh, by adding some shredded sharp cheese in here, that would be delicious. Um, you know, the world's your pickle, you do you. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mash these for just a second. And then I'm gonna switch to a one spoon. I'm actually gonna do that right now. So I'll make such a ginormous mess and keep this really fluffy. Add the rest of my liquids and then we start adding the cheese and sour cream. See how gorgeous and creamy those are? And we haven't even added the sour cream and the cream cheese yet, which I do a little bit at a time. Um, please, like I said, don't be tempted to add these to uh, a food processor to speed up the time because you'll end up with glue and what you want is really just sort of creamy, delicious, thick, salty, but not too salty. I'm not adding any additional salt because my salt, my water was, Heavily, heavily salted. I'm just gonna add a some black pepper 
and I'm going to stir in the sour cream and the cream cheese until melted, and then that's it. And that's pretty much it. Let me go for a taste test here. I love me mashed potatoes. Oh my goodness. Mm. A spot is hard to beat. I've come to the conclusion that potatoes are my favorite food because you can do so much with them. Mmm. That is fantastic. It is so good. The best mashed potatoes on the planet. Put these in your slow cooker. Keep them on warm. You may want to add a little bit more cream or milk or butter as the day goes on so that they're not, they don't dry out. But I'm telling you, this will make everybody so happy. Go to laurainthekitchen.com for the written recipe. I hope you enjoy spending time with me, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.